Good morning, SCF Kids. It's Miss Jenna here, and I'm so excited to be hanging out with you at SCF Kids Online this morning. Today, we're going to talk about the origin story of a really cool man by the name of John. We're going to talk about when he was born, but before we get to that part, I have a question for you. How many of you have like a little baby brother or baby sister at home? Oh, they're so cute. How about some of you know some babies? I know I do. I've got a few really good friends. In fact, do you remember Miss Kara? Yeah, she just had a baby too. And she is absolutely adorable. Before you have a baby though, you have a lot of preparing to do. You have to install the crib, make a room for the baby, install the car seat, buy bottles, buy clothes, everything you're gonna need to have this baby who's gonna change your life. But John, in our story today, he was a little bit different. I'm sure his parents had to prepare, but he was actually preparing the way for another baby to be born. A baby that was going to change the world.
Well, welcome to our game show called What Would You Buy a Baby? I'm your host, Charming Charlie, and if you so choose to accept this challenge, I have a game for you. Your job is to shout out what item you would buy a baby. You ready? Question number one. Would you buy a baby a bottle or a dirt bike? I'll wait for your answers. You guys think a dirt bike? Wrong. It's a bottle. Hey, have you guys ever seen a baby riding a dirt bike? No. Question number two. Would you buy a baby formula to drink or a trampoline? No, not a trampoline. Definitely formula. Babies can drink formula, but they can't drink a trampoline. Okay, question number three. Do you want to buy babies diapers or Spider-Man figurines? Pew, 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 pew. The web, yeah, yeah, you got that? Oh, yeah. Definitely diapers, right? Yeah, you don't want to be caught with a baby without a diaper. You got one, right? All right, last question. Question number four. You did do pretty good, but I, I think for this one, I need you to shout out just a little bit louder. Do you want to buy a baby a stroller or a new soccer ball? a stroller. You can push a baby in a stroller, but you can't push a baby on a soccer ball. <sighs> you guys have done a, a fairly good job. If, if you got all of those right, give yourself a pat on the back and your neighbor a high five. If you didn't get any of those right, give yourself a pat on the back and your neighbor a high five because you're awesome too. <laughs> That's a wrap for our game. What would you buy a baby? But it's time for us to check out our Bible story for today. So take a look. Zechariah and his wife, mm -hmm. Elizabeth, were old and had no children. They lived outside of Jerusalem in the hill country and did what was right. Zechariah was a priest, and at that time, mm. King Herod ruled over Judea. Twice a year, Zechariah went to the temple in Jerusalem to carry out his duties as a priest. Many priests served in the temple. One day, Zechariah was chosen to go into the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. People gathered outside to pray, and Zechariah went inside the sanctuary. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared. Zechariah was terrified. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, the angel said. God heard your prayer. Your wife, will have a son, and you will name him John. His birth will bring you joy. God will be with him. The Holy Spirit will fill him even before he is born. The angel said that John would help many people turn back to God. John would go ahead of the Lord and get people ready for his coming. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I know this will happen? I'm old and my wife is old. The angel said, God sent me to tell you this good news because you did not believe my words. You won't be able to speak until these things happen. Zechariah left the temple. The people outside realized he had seen a vision and could Whoa. not talk. When he was done serving in Jerusalem, Zechariah went home to Elizabeth. In time, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives rejoiced. Zechariah and Elizabeth named their son John. Suddenly, Zechariah could speak again. He began praising God. The people who lived nearby could tell that God was with John. The Holy Spirit filled John. 
Zechariah praised God and told the people God's words. God has come to help his people. He will save us through David's family. He will rescue us from our enemies. Then he spoke to John. And you will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him. The time had come. God was going to bring his light into the darkness of the world. Peace was coming for God's people. John grew up and lived in the wilderness until God called him to get the people ready for Jesus. When Zechariah believed God's word, he praised God. John was born to prepare the way for Jesus. John would point people to Jesus, and they would praise God for keeping his promise to send the Savior. So Zachariah and Elizabeth's prayers were answered about having a baby because they knew God and they followed his ways, and they knew that God was going to send a Messiah to save them. When Zachariah was at the temple, an angel of the Lord speaks to him, and he doesn't believe what the angel's saying, right? And so what does God do? zips his lips yep right up until the time when john was born but even when zachariah couldn't speak he knew that god's plan and god's ways were the right way and god filled his life with his glory because john was born to prepare the way for jesus hey there i'm pastor brian and it's time for questions from kids Levi from Blacksburg, Virginia asks, What are angels? Why did God create angels? Levi, that's a good question because we see angels all throughout Scripture. You know, as you're reading the big story of Scripture, you will see angels time and time again make appearances, and when they appear, they have something important that they're doing. Now, one of the first things that we see them doing is delivering messages, and that is their primarily role. Uh, That's what they're named after. The word angel actually means messenger. And so God created angels with that primary purpose. Now let me pause there and say this. Angels are not people. Some people believe that we become angels. That's not true. The Bible says that God created angels differently from people. So we will not become angels. They are different. They are distinct from us. And God created angels again to be his messengers. And that's what we see over and over again. We see that in today's story where an angel brings a message about the birth of John. We see it with Mary and Joseph, that another angel brings a message about the birth of Jesus. So often we see them bringing messages, but that's not the only thing they do. We also see that angels protect people, they encourage people, they give guidance. And so angels help us live for God, obey Him, and understand His ways. So that's the big thing that angels do. That's why God created them. I have a question back for you. So we know that angels have a special role in God's kingdom but so do you and so do I. The Bible says that we are messengers of Christ. What message does God give us to share with others? Let's talk about babies. I thought we had to use baby food as part of our memory verse game today. So I've got these plates here with parts of the memory verse on them. I'm going to choose the baby food of choice, which I might regret later. Uh, peas, for instance, and I'm going to dump it over top of these words here. Oh, that does not look very appetizing. Oh does not want to come out. Oh, there it is. Yep. A big old mushy pile of peas. I'm going to give myself 10 seconds to try and get the words to the verse out of here. Whatever words I get out, I'm going to take out of the verse and you're going to have to read it with me after this. Okay. I can smell it and it is so gross. (laughs) Can you guys smell that? 
Woo! Yeah. All right. Here we go. 10 seconds on the timer. Oh, mm, that's so gross. <laughs> Woo! I think I'm going to throw up, guys. Oh, yeah, it's over already. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. That is not good. Okay, um, cool. I got one. Uh, it says he was, all right? Uh, yeah, okay. Let's read it together on the count of three. One, two, three. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John 1, 1 to 2. I might be ready to quit already, guys. I can still taste those peas. Okay, let's try another one. Moving on over here. Uh, let's go with beef and carrots in rice. I don't think that sounds much better, guys. Oh, no. How do babies like this stuff? They gobble it up. I remember Adeline when she was a baby, she would just eat this stuff. This stuff does not want to come out of there. I'm just going to have to use my finger here. All right, get real messy. Here we go. Okay. Here we go, guys. 10 seconds. Oh, didn't start. There we go. Oh, guys. Oh, that's worse. Uh. <laughs> uh. Somebody get me a glass of water? Whew, this stuff is awful. Wow. All right, once again, I only got one. Oh, don't lick your lips. Blah. With. We're going to take the word with out of the verse. Read it with me. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John 1, 1 to 2. I got one left, guys. Hopefully it's a little bit better than those last two, although it's all over my hands. Ooh, pear. Actually, I don't really like pears either. <laughs> Who picked these? It doesn't smell very good. Oh, <laughs> let's hide those in there. Here we go. This one's a little bit more runny, so uh, here we go. One last round. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm, sorry. Mm. Don't cheated. This one's much better. Actually, the longer it was in my mouth, no. Mm. I officially don't like baby food. But I did get two that time. Almost cheated for part of it, but John 1, 1 to 2, as well as Hmm. In the. All right. Read it with me one last time. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John 1, 1 to 2. Okay, well, I'm officially done with this game. We've practiced our verse a few times, but now I want you to go grab your Bibles because I'm going to go get cleaned up and I'll meet you back here in just a second. Now that you got your Bibles, we're going to open them up to Malachi chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 1.
It says, The Lord Almighty answers, I will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then the Lord you are looking for will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. So hundreds and hundreds of years before John was born, there was this message in Malachi that God was going to send a messenger. And who was the messenger? Yeah, it was John. John was predicted years before he ever happened. And John's purpose was to be a messenger to prepare the way for King Jesus to come, for Jesus to be born. And God kept his promise, even after hundreds of years. And God has a, had a purpose for John's life, and God has a purpose for our life as well. So we're gonna sing a song called Made For This. We have a reason and we have a purpose. So let's sing together. <laughs>
Well, I've had so much fun with you guys today, and I'm so glad that you invited me to be a part of your morning. But before you go, I have a question that I want you to think about. So what are some ways that God can use you to point others to Jesus? Well, what does that really mean? Yes, it does mean that we need to share the gospel with people, to share with them about how Jesus died and rose again on the third day to save us from our sins. That is important. But what are some other ways we can share God with other people? Think about your friends, your family, your next door neighbor. What can we do? Yeah, show them love. Show them God's love. So John came to prepare the way for Jesus to be born. And we can prepare the way for Jesus to return by showing love to other people. So I want you to go this week and I want you to show some love, some of God's love to those people that are around you. But let's close off today with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your love. Only you are able to do all things and only you are worthy of all praise. Help us as we trust and obey you. You sent your only son to save us from sin and we wanna glorify you with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.